Dear students, in our previous lecture, we saw the basic definition of a project and then the phases of managing a project and the types of uh, schedule uh, types of network analysis for scheduling a project. Now here we have the basic definitions. The first definition is network. The graphical representation of a given project consisting of several activities is called as network. So what we are going to do is we are going to consider a project which involves various activities. We will be having nodes uh, and using the nodes and lines we will be constructing a graphical representation of a given project. For example, we represent the starting and ending nodes in this way and the activity with the help of a line and uh, we, we name the nodes as node 1 to node 2 and activity A can be carried out. So then after completing the uh, like after completing activity A we will move on to the next activity and we should we can also remember simultaneously we can have two activities because uh, we can uh, carry over some parallel activities also. So the other node will be node 3 and then node 4. Node uh, and uh, this activity A is from 1 to 2 and uh, we have an arrow diagram also and then activity 2 to 3 can be represented as B and then activity 2 to 4 can be represented as C. So uh, this is just for an example. So the, uh, drawing a net graphical representation for the activities is known as a network. And now here we have the event. The beginning and ending points of the activities are known as events. Now if you see for the activity A, the beginning point is 1 and the ending point is 2. Now this beginning and ending point are known as events and also 3, 4, all these are known as events. And then here we have the definition of looping. If the network cannot be continued, then it is called as looping. It is also called as cycling error. We will learn this definition more in detail while solving a problem, while drawing a network graphical representation for a project. And then now here we have dangling. The activity which does not have any successor is called as dangling. Now what is successor? So if you have an activity, now for example, this is activity A, activity B and activity C. If you see, after performing activity A, we have to perform activity B, which means activity B is the successor of activity A because we carry out this activity after performing activity A. Now, activity A has to be carried out before activity B. So, this will become the predecessor for activity B. Hope you understand it clearly. Activity B is the successor of activity A. As well, activity C is also a successor of activity A. And activity A is a predecessor for the activity B as well as for the activity C. So this is what is a is successor and predecessor. The activity which does not have any successor is called as dangling. So now if you, if you see after activity B, I haven't, uh, in this diagram, I haven't drawn any activity. So there is no successor for this activity. So and this activity is also left all alone. So here we have a dangling. Okay, now next uh, we shall see what is this activity. For a long time we have been discussing about activity. Now what is this? Activity is a task or it is an item of work to be done in a project. It consumes resources like time, money, labor, even materials, machines, etc. So this is the activity. Now here we have some more definitions. Parallel activity. Two activities are said to be parallel if they can be carried out simultaneously. For example, here in the diagram, activity B and activity C are parallel to one another because they can be carried out simultaneously after completing the activity A. In fact, we can have one more activity also. There is not at all an issue. So we can have more parallel activities also. For example, in uh, while constructing a building, the foundation work for the building can be carried out and simultaneously the digging of the well can also be carried out. 
so those two becomes the parallel activities so uh, in, su in such cases we can have parallel activities and then already we saw what is a predecessor and successor now here we have the definition the activ activity which should be completed before starting another activity is called as a predecessor now if you see here in this example what i have given this activity a has to be carried out first after completing activity a we have to carry out with activity b and activity c then activity a is the predecessor for activity b and c okay so that is the definition for predecessor and successor the activity which can start only after completing an activity is called as a successor now if you see here b and c can start only after completing the activity a and so the b and c are the successors of the activity a so that is the definition and now here we have a definition for dummy activity if the project contains two or more activities which have some of their immediate predecessors in common then there is a need for introducing an activity known as dummy activity so now let me explain this with the help of an example now if you see if i take an activity okay now i am considering activity a and b so this is activity a and activity b now here i end up with an event and then i start up an activity c here so this is activity c now if you see the c is the successor of the activities a and b as well then it is denoted in this way that is we join these two events with the help of a dotted line and this is known as the dummy activity that is this dummy activity is used to preserve the order of the activities so in the problems the duration of the dummy activities is taken as zero okay there will be duration for each activities the duration for this dummy activity will be taken as zero um we will you can understand this uh, dummy activity while uh, constructing a network diagram so at that stage you will understand it more better so as of now you remember the definition for the dummy activity so therefore these are the basic definitions and terminologies used in uh, scheduling ne uh, network analysis okay now uh, let me just uh, tell you some uh, thing like th these are the arrow diagrams and this is the initial node and this is the terminal node for the activity a and this becomes a for example if we name it nodes if we name like this one is the initial node for activity a and two is the terminal node for activity a now this initial node is known as the tail and this is known as the head event so these are events we already saw that so this is known as the tail event and this is known as the head event so can you tell me the tail event for the activity c and the head event of the activity c yes the tail event for the activity c is 2 and the head event for the activity c is 4 so hope you understand all these definitions and also i would like to add up one thing here we may sometimes write c to be greater than a which implies that c is the successor of a and a is the predecessor of c so the, this is uh, this is also an implication other than this there are certain rules for constructing a project that is the uh, network should not have loops and there should be no dangling also so dangling is also not allowed and only one activity should connect any two nodes so for example if we have two nodes only one activity can connect the node we cannot have another activity to connect this so this is not allowed so only one activity will connect two nodes um so in our next video we will learn how to draw the network and then we will learn uh, how to calculate the critical path thank you